How are we doing tonight? Everyone doing good? Everyone having a good night so far? Yeah. Awesome. I played Division Three sports. Not just any Division Three sport, but I played Division Three lacrosse. And the uh, worst part about playing Division Three sports is you got more. You have less fans in the stand than a high school football game. It's kind of demoralizing there. But um, I don't know if you can tell by looking at me. I could have gone D1. I mean, I have a hell of a muffin top. <laughs> Look at this. I, I worked for this thing. I worked for this thing. This might be silly. Um, but yeah, I mean, lacrosse. Lacrosse is a weird sport because it's very homoerotic if you think about it too much. Like you have a shaft with a head and you're playing with balls. I mean, and while you whip other dudes with this chaff and to get their balls, and it's just, it's a little, a little homoerotic, but uh, it's just kind of gay to me. But uh, now that I've got some sexual tension going on in the room, let's move on. I got cyberbullied on Twitter recently by a 14 year old. <laughs> And all I said was I agree that the U.S. women's soccer team deserve equal pay. The same kid kept calling me a fat prick. And like, I don't even have a pro profile picture, so I don't even know how he knew. Let's see it. It's 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 actually my cat, so it didn't work. But uh, I mean, the worst part about it is I had no idea how to respond to this kid, so all I said back was, "I'm not fat, I'm just big boned." <laughs> like the fat prick I am. But yeah, I mean, the fucking kid's name was Branson, too. Branson. B-R-A-N-S-O-N. Branson. Definition, asshole. <laughs> like, this kid hasn't even got to college yet, and he already has a Title IX charge waiting for him with a name like Branson. I mean, his parents had to be millennials, naming the kid Branson. But uh, I don't know if you can tell by that last story, I'm a feminist. Uh, we got any feminists in the building? Uh, yeah, yeah. Notice that was like 90% women clapping. Man, we got any, have any male feminists in the building? Anyone clap for your male feminists? Yeah! Alright, those of you that just cheered, you're welcome. I got you some pussy tonight. But yeah, I wasn't always a male feminist. Like when I was a kid. When I was a kid. When I was a kid, I used to print out porn. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it's confession time. And it wasn't, it wasn't in like a weird way. It was in like a super fucking weird way. And I had this like whole collection. It was just, it was a shit show. I don't know. I don't know why I did it, but looking back, it was. It, but I found this glorious bastard one night on the internet. If those of you are curious, it was a picture of Jennifer Aniston and Courtney Cox from Friends, photoshopped with like massive tits just making out. That's, that's hot to end. Even Branson would find that shit attractive. And I guess labeling the folder as do not open meant, sure, let's click right the fuck in this bitch to my dad, because he opened it when he was helping me with my homework. And after like 14, 15 seconds of me just staring at it with my mouth salivating, it's like, uh... He tried to shield my eyes real quick and goes, well, don't look at it. Like, I hadn't seen it 10 times that day already. Yeah, but that was like peak non-male feminist calling, where I was jerking off more times a day than Mitch McConnell before the Seattle tore off. Mitch, Mitch, Mitch McConnell is a greasy old bastard. I don't know if any of you guys are fans of him, but he is, a, he is an old fart. Yeah, boo. He sucks. <laughs> Here's my impression of Mitch McConnell during an interview. Mitch, do you plan on running for your election next year? Uh, Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm a, speaking of Mr. Powell, I don't know if any of you have seen his wife before, but I thought she was going to be like a super hot young blonde after all the money and stuff. But no, she's like super Asian. Like, I'm not hating, I just did not expect her to be this Asian. And like, she's a super successful businesswoman, so I guess some people flip houses and Mr. Powell flips Taiwanese women. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways. Thank you. What's going on in my life? I recently had a birthday, turned the big 2 6. You don't, you don't, you don't have to cheer for that. It's, it's just getting old. 
But uh, the worst part about Asian in other years, you start playing Russian roulette with your male pattern baldness genetics. And I, this light is pretty forgiving, but if you can't tell, I've, the gun was fully loaded in my scenario. <laughs> so I've been trying to keep, I'm dying on this balding hill. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on to my hair as long as I can. And so I started on this hair regrowth stuff, and it's been working alright. I mean, that's what my girlfriend tells me, but it's been working alright. And they had to meet with a doctor beforehand to make sure it's the right fit for you. And I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I'm on some antidepressants because I'm a little depressed sometimes. But the doctor told me, he said, Colin, with your history of mental health, I want to warn you that this medication may cause heightened suicidal thoughts or depressive states. And I said with no hesitation, Doc, losing my hair already makes me want to kill myself. How much worse can it get? I was in quite the tizzy there, quite the quagmire, if you will. And yes, everyone, I just found out that quagmire means dilemma. I'm not very gingy gingy about losing my hair, okay? <laughs> like, I, just, I can't do anything cool anymore without just remembering that I'm balding. It really just kicks me back to reality. It's like having a little Branson on my shoulder and just telling me, like, making fun of my bald spot 24 7. What else is going on? Oh, I, uh, I recently finished my four-month physical therapy for my dislocated elbow. You, you won't cheer when you find out what, how I did it. But I'll, for those of you that know me, you know I'll try anything once. Spicy food? Sure, I'll chat my ass for a week. Anal? Sure, I'll walk funny for a week, but not after the spicy food. Yeah. Ew. Ew, yeah. <laughs> I'll even try a backflip when I have no idea how to do one. So I tried said backflip, and I ended up flopping harder than LeBron James, all in the span of like a four-inch jump off the ground. I just went sideways, like a bowling ball. Yeah, but, I mean, geez. They say big trees fall hard, so do fat guys. <laughs> But enough about my fat ass, let's talk about my family. Yeah! I got a pretty crazy family. I know everyone probably has a crazy family, but the one thing that like I started learning as I got older is your family stops sheltering you from your family stops sheltering you from stuff as you get older. Anyone else's families do that? Like you start learning more about your family? <laughs> like you learn Like you learn that Uncle Jimmy can't be within the school, like within a hundred feet of the school at all times. I thought that was. He's a, he's, a, he's a sex offender. I can hear you. <laughs> Uncle Jimmy, yeah, he's not allowed Thanksgiving anymore. But uh, my family personally stopped hiding stuff from me. Like they started telling me, like I have multiple family members with DUIs. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's a shot right there. Everyone take a shot. But uh, I guess you can say alcoholism doesn't run in my family. It drives. <laughs> they say never drive faster than your guardian angel can fly. But I didn't. I didn't know my family got stuck with Henry Ruggs as our guardian angel. Oh my god. That's a tough joke. Those of you that get that, that's a tough joke. Ouch. But this alcoholic in my family is trying to have a baby with his wife. And I'm not a medical professional, but if you can't start your car without using a breathalyzer, you probably shouldn't procreate. You should not have a baby. And I shouldn't be too worried, because if you think us men, if you think us men couldn't find the whole sober, imagine this after 10 beers. Is that the clue? That's, that's my butt hole. Oh my god. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I just hope this baby doesn't come out looking like Helen Keller with fetal alcohol syndrome, if they do have a baby. Yeah. But, I guess, on the, top on the topic of Helen Keller, do y'all believe that she was real? No. Like, I, I don't doubt she existed, but do you think she, like, succeeded as she did? No. No fucking shot. There's no way. She went deaf and blind away, like, one or two. You got, and kudos to her parents, though. If I was her parents, I'd toss a basketball at her when I was mad and watch her read that shit. 
It's like War and Peace for Blind and Deaf people. I heard as she got older, she started wearing tighter fitting pants so you could read her lips. I'll leave you on with this one. How did Helen Keller break her arm driving? She was trying to read a stop sign going 80 miles an hour. Now I'm playing. It said she was one of my family members and she was getting another DUI. Try cyberbullying me for that, Branson. Appreciate y'all. Thank you guys. I've been calling you. Thank you so much.